Hey everyone, welcome to a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode is Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Um, I was so excited when I got an advanced copy of this book because you made me read book one in this series, and it was a delight. It was so good. It was my favorite book, I think, last year. I know it was. Um, so on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing A Walk of Shame by Avery Flynn. We'll link the synopsis of the book in our on-the-shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com. It's really interesting with this book before we get to all the stuff. I had, previous to Anger Bang, I had kind of decided I was breaking up with Avery Flynn. That I wasn't sure her books were still for me because they lacked what I wanted in a book from her. And these, they came back. And I'm so excited about this one because when we get to the tropes, I'll tell you why. Uh, ratings, or sorry, I copied and pasted from the website because <laughs> I was last minuting. Okay, this series is The Downside of Dating. This book released here in February of 2024. The ebook comes out March tomorrow, or not tomorrow, um, March 11th, 2024, the ebook comes out. The audiobook released before the ebook on this one. Um, this is the series is The Downside of Dating, Interconnected Standalones, Tropes, Rom Com, One Night Stand, Meet Cute, After Sports. There is no third act breakup in this book. And Curvy Heroin. And is she counted? jilted bride she is a jilted bride yes but it's even though it's like five years later yeah but she is a jilted bride which plays into her mindset about things it's also it's technically relevant. a hockey I think it's relevant it's more than just an after sports romance because he is after he's like retired um but it's uh it's kind of a hockey romance because she works for the team too so close proximity yeah. also co-workers and neighbors. Yeah. And neighbors. All the good stuff. So one of the things I want to mention about this is our heroine, Astrid, is a curvy heroine. She is plus size. Typically previous, every time Avery Flynn has written a curvy plus sized heroine, it has been in the context of a fake relationship. And this time, it is not a fake relationship. And I could not have been more overjoyed when I realized that. Like, I was so happy. I love this book. I know you do. Um, the narrators are Robert uh, Hatchett and Savannah Peachwood. And the put out percentage is 13%. And it is spicy, but I am not eating dinner in their kitchen or his kitchen. Um, I guess technically it's a one night stand too. Oh, I said that. I said that in the tropes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about one of the most swoon worthy heroes I have read in 2024. Can we just say like the vibes that he gives off at one night stand in the, in the book, it describes that his apartment gives divorce dad, Yes. His name is Cal and he totally is a divorced dad vibe. Um not quite but he's not a dad. Yeah, he's not a dad, but he's not quite a bachelor. He definitely has some Pedro Pascal like zaddy vibes. Um he does. And Cal is a dirty talker. And he is a man that is a giver. Very much so. But he's also kind of sweet. So sweet. There is this whole thing with, there's this scene in the book where they are at the, so they're meet cute. Let's talk about their meet cute. Because our heroine's name is Astrid. Astrid is a jilted bride. Five years previous to the start of this book, she was left by her fiance at the altar. Um, because, Not at the altar. Before the altar. Before the altar. Yeah, FaceTime. He's at the airport facetiming her on their wedding day yes well so it's horrible <laughs> it's horrible so her father oh, five before, years 
let's sorry just one more thing about this because this is the just read the prologue read the prologue i mean honestly read the intro to the book because that alone like the like avery's author note alone yeah. will just inspire you to read it but like it just gets better and better but like he's at the airport facetiming her on their wedding day not actually breaking up no no he's not breaking up with her he's just like we're not gonna get married today because so Astrid's dad at the time five years ago is the coach of the raging Cajun hockey team which is the rivals to the ice knights which is the harbor city team and on her wedding day her fiance gets he's the hockey for the raging Cajun he gets traded to the ice knights and he has to be in harbor city that day to sign his contract and get everything moving because they have a game the next day. And she, he just thinks she's going to be okay with it and fix all the problems. And she's not. She's not. And okay. he's so clueless. He's so clueless. Like so, even five years later, he's still clueless. Yeah. So the meet cute between these two is... Astrid is working, helping her friend out for the night, working at the family bar, which is downstairs from her apartment. And she's working at the bar and she has a rule when she works at the bar, there is no hockey talk. And you quickly learn that for the last five years, well, actually for three years after her jilted wedding, um, she did what she called the world dick tour. <laughs> she went all over the world um, and just had sex with a lot of randos and saw the world and saw the world because she kind of so her relationship with her fiance like they were childhood sweethearts like she'd only been in a relationship with him she'd followed him through his career and stuck everything out so until she got to be jilted bride she'd never really had control of her own destiny and um her father is also a coach so she's always working hockey hockey was her whole world and then all of a sudden, she had all this freedom. So, yes, yeah, she's been on this three-year journey of World Dick Tour. And then she's established herself in Chicago. She's back to doing the job she loves, managing people's lives for very wealthy people. And then on the side, she helps out all of her friends. And one of her friends, she helps out at their bar, picking up extra shifts so that they can have nights off. And stuff. Yeah, it's the family bar. And there's a jar, the no hockey jar, if you talk about hockey in front of Astrid you have to pay into the jar um she also is not a fan of a certain song that comes on the jukebox so if you pay that song she will legit dick punch you um it's spicy so the cousin of the friend that she's covering for at the bar starts to get lippy and she's taking care of it but Cal sees it and he decides that this is not okay you cannot talk to her like that so he comes and he like pretty much slams him and takes his arm, puts it behind his back and holds him onto the top of the bar and makes him apologize to Astrid. And then he wants him to put 20 bucks in the fuck hockey jar. The fuck hockey jar. Yeah. And <laughs> so she ends up calling it a night at the bar. The bar is such a funny, magical place. But they go upstairs. They have their first sexual interaction. That's 13 percent. So good. So spicy. But the best part, the best part of this whole book is the bingo in the bar. Yes. The, the bingo is hilarious. The family, the family that owns the bar, her friend's family, there's some undergroundness, a little bit of sus. Um, we're not exactly sure how they have money to keep running the bar because the, they're trying to sell the bar. But there's also the Granny D that's questionable. That's also Astrid's neighbor who hates Astrid. But there's this bingo in the bar, and there's this Diet Coke that fell off a truck. And in the midst of this, she loses her Diet Coke, and Cal has it. And he slowly starts dulling it out to her by leaving her little gifts on her desk at the office. It's really cute. Well, and so what happens is, is after they have their one night stand, she thinks, okay, I never have to see him again, whatever. I can avoid him on the stairs. 
And then she realizes that he's the new hockey coach. Her dad, who now coaches for the Ice Knights, has brought in. And Cal has his own backstory. He's coaching her ex. Right. He's coaching her ex. Because her ex is the one having trouble. He has the yips. Yeah. He has the yips. And it's just, the dynamic in this book is so funny. Um, But it's also so sweet. And honestly, Cal, Cal is so sweeney, but Astrid is like, incredibly feisty so if you have been a fan of her previous books um tom tomboy that she wrote that's the hardigans fiona hardigans book if you are fans of that book or of that series you want to read walk of shame it's so good it's like classic avery flynn it's it's just so good like the banter is top notch. The comedic situ the situational comedy in this series is some of my favorite. Like one of my favorite scenes is um when Astrid is pushing Cal out the window on the fire escape. Oh, because her dad has showed up for their brunch, yes, their Sunday she brunch. It's her dad, it's hysterical. And and she has like a one bedroom flat that's all open. There's no yeah. She has a studio. There's nowhere her- for him to hide. <laughs> so funny. I just really really liked this book. I like the banter. There is not a third act breakup, but that does not mean that your heart doesn't break a little bit in this book. True. Um, and part of the reason there's not a third act breakup is they weren't really together. They were banging, but they weren't really together. And Cal has to show his level of commitment. Because that's one of the things that's been was really interesting about Astrid's character. If we really look at how she's written, she's never been a priority in anyone's life. Hockey, for everybody in her life, was always number one. And she just kind of went along with it. And... She kind of did that too. Like her life up until the breakup at the, the, like her life up until the prologue of the book had always been hockey as well. Like hockey had been first and foremost in her life and everybody else's life. So it was really nice to see the resolution of the book. Yeah, it really was. And I really like Cal's sisters. Um, and so, Avery Flynn, if you're listening to this, we, the ones that are single, we would really very much like their books, too. I would. Yes. Um, and I will. Oh, and there's cameos. So many cameos. So many cam- cameos. We got Hardigan Brothers and uh, Nick from Nick Blackburn from um, uh, the book one in the Ice Nights. It was so good. It was so good. Um. It was like fan service, really good rom-com, everything that you'd want in a book, everything. Yeah, for real. Like it was, it was everything. It's the reason I fell in love with Avery Flynn's characters and the stories she tells. This was a reminder of those stories and that I love. And all the, like so many authors these days are leaving so many plot holes in their books. Yeah, Every true. single little thing. Every single little thing in the book had resolution. The jukebox. Like, there's yeah. a, like, everything you could have wanted resolved or even things that you didn't even think needed resolution were resolved and tied up. Like, it was just such a nicely... Right, like, all six Diet story. Cokes got delivered. Yes. You know, there was there was purpose. There was reason. And I really did love this book. And Cal, again, book boyfriend material. So much so. I can't wait for the next book. I'm so excited about this series. I'm so excited about whatever she's writing. <laughs> I know. I'm super excited. I cannot wait for book three. And like I said, I really hope we get some of Cal's sister's stories because they're a hoot. And there are some Hardigan brothers that don't have significant others yet. So, come on, Miss Avery. We're waiting. We're ready. We're ready. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for reading Walk a Shame with me. 
I love it. <laughs> it was awesome. Until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.